Welcome everybody to Linux Academy. My name is Terry and over this course we will be covering all things Linux. Introduction to installation and setup. So let's start out our GNOME video by updating our system as we always do. And we'll talk about GNOME. GNOME 3 was a pretty radical departure from GNOME 2. In fact the entire user paradigm was shifted to more of a composite light version of a desktop. It has a number of cool looking visualizations but the UI by and large is different enough that it's confusing for many users. So we're going to take a look at what it looks like and then in a subsequent video we'll take a look at some of the customizations that are available for it. Now one of the things to keep in mind is that on Ubuntu, Ubuntu GNOME is not an official distribution. What I mean by that is that GNOME is available for Ubuntu, but there isn't a desktop distribution for it. So, for example, for KDE, KDE4 has an official Ubuntu desktop called Kubuntu, and that's the KDE version, just like uh, there's an aversion, a, a version that's just XFCE or just plain old X Windows that's called Xubuntu. And there's an educational version called Edubuntu. There isn't an equivalent. There, there's, there is a GNOME Ubuntu, but it's not listed as an official Ubuntu distribution. However, all of the packages will run just fine for the most part. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to install it. So we need to install it a particular way so that we get everything that we need to run it and it won't hang up on us. So you'll see various sites that will tell you in order to install the GNOME desktop you have to do sudo apt-get install Ubuntu GNOME desktop. The problem with that is it won't install GDM, the, the GNOME display manager. And in order for all of the compositing effects to run and run stably you have to install it with the GDM manager, the, the GNOME display manager. So we're going to add on here sudo apt-get install GNOME des Ubuntu GNOME desktop and Ubuntu GNOME default settings. Which means in install the GDM. Uh, effectively it means install GDM. Now again, to save time, because this is actually larger even than the KDE installation, it's about a 600 meg download and about 1.4 gigabytes in size. I've already made that installation and set it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to run, uh, we, we need to reconfigure our system so that it uses the GNOME Display Manager. And by default we use a display manager called LightDM, which is what Ubuntu and Unity use by default. All that is is, is the, the screen that allows us to log in, but it launches the desktop itself. So in this case, because LightDM is now our current default display manager, we have to do a sudo dpackage reconfigure and then gdm. And it, it just allows us to pick from the, the display managers that are available. LightDM, KDM, they will run each other. In other words, if I, if I use KDE, uh, KDM to log in, I can start Unity. If I use LightDM to log in, I can start KDE. You can start GNOME, but you might not be able to, depending on the, the state of the libraries and the versions uh, that are out at that time. So if you're going to use GNOME, use the GNOME Display Manager. So if I now log out of here, when it resets the Display Manager, and we have to reboot. When we come back up, the display manager will be the GNOME display manager. And we'll go ahead and pause the video here and come back when the display manager is up. And here's by default what the GNOME display manager looks like. It's pretty plain Jane, although the the 3D drop shadowing and the glowing text looks pretty cool. 
You click on the user account you want to log in as. You click on the session that you want to log in as. And you see you can launch from GBM, KDE, or Unity. Although I sometimes have problems if I'm using GBM launching Unity without, it, uh, without the launch bar having some issues. So if we log in, we get to our desktop. It looks pretty similar, although there's really nothing on either side. And here's where a lot of the, the, the user paradigm has shifted so that a lot of users get confused. What do you click on? Well, if I click on the username, I get some information. I can bring up my system settings. Hey, I've seen this stuff before. It looks pretty, pretty familiar to me. I can click on this, which will give me network. OK, that's, that's fine. Sound, accessibility settings. Hey, a calendar comes up. That's great. What's this thing called activities? Let's click on that. Well, what comes up? Well, this kind of looks like a launch bar. In fact, it is a launch bar. That's kind of weird. And if we come over here, we get my desktop, which I just click on, and it takes me back to here. Well, do I have anything started? The minute I hit my keyboard, or I click in, in the middle of the desktop where there's nothing, then I've got an issue. Let's bring up the Firefox web browser. OK, it's here in the middle. Click on activities. Oh, OK. So this, this gives me a view of my applications that are running. Let's start up my files. So now I've got two of them. What happens if I click on activities again? Well, I, I'm, I, you can't do an alt tab. Alt tab doesn't really have any functionality in, in the GNOME desktop. But if I click on this, it'll bring it right to the front. If I go back to activities and I click on this, it brings it right to the front. It's kind of a cool app, uh, animation, and it is composite light. But compositing, for example, don't run Compiz on the GNOME desktop. It will not run right. In fact, it, it will likely crash your desktop. I can bring up another application and go back to activities. What's this over here? Oh, there's a second desktop. So if I click here, all of my applications stay where they are, and my desktop focus comes down. Can I move from here to here? Oh, yeah, I can. And now there's a third desktop. Why does a third desktop appear, and why couldn't I get to it before? There's a fourth. And I wonder if there'll be a fifth and a sixth. And sure enough, if I move this down here, it just moves down. So if I have a fourth application and a fifth application and a sixth application, it will give me more and more desktops, five, six. By default, there's six. So what does all this mean? It's actually kind of cool separation for your desktop. And I, I can actually find applications much the same as I found before. So it's interacting with Unity in a little bit of a different paradigm. So by default, my applications run more or less full screen on my desktop, right here. But you'll see that there's no window controls on it. But you can use gestures to control your desktop. So if I pull it down, I can resize my window. If I move it over to the right, much like in Windows, it'll take up half of my window. If I pull it down and drag it to the top, it'll take up the entire screen. So I have the ability to manage my windows, but the user paradigm has changed. So this is, this is what it's taken the most flack for, is the, the large change in paradigm that GNOME has introduced. Although you do have the ability to do everything that you always did before, only here, it's just in a different way. You can manage your windows a different way. You can drag them across desktops. You can move desktops. The animation move. Clicking on this activity messes up a lot of people, but it's automatically mapped the Windows key on your keyboard for the same thing. So since that paradigm is something that a lot of people are used to, 
that seems to be the easiest way to, to become used to this type of desktop. So that's all we're going to talk about for a quick overview of the GNOME desktop and how it behaves. And we'll look at some of the customization options in our next video. But for now, my name is Terry for Linux Academy, brought to you by Pinehead TV.